Many of you may not be familiar with the scripture. Some of you are. And let me just go ahead and give you a disclaimer. Um, it may not be one of them jump and shout messages, but I hope that you learn of God today and you have a different perspective. And I hope that we leave with the understanding that we are created to change the world. Listen, we do that by becoming free. The Bible says that we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. Listen, when you are made free, it don't say it sets you free. When you are made free, you're free. When somebody sets you free, you might be taken back in bondage. And you got to be set free again. But when you're made free and you're made free in your mind, you know you're free. They can't take you bondage because you already understand the freedom that lives on the inside of you. So as we read the words of Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. Somebody say mature. Hallelujah. Mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of God. Then we no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love. Somebody said in love. Listen, I ain't got nothing but love for you today. Nothing but love for you. Speaking the truth in love, we what? Will grow to become in every respect the mature, somebody say mature, mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds, somebody say builds, builds itself up there's love again. In love as each part does its work. Hallelujah. Look, touch somebody say, get in where you fit in. Get in where you fit in. Listen, but whatever you do, tell them, but fit the print. You may be seated in his presence. Listen. Get in where you fit in, but whatever you do, please fit the print. Listen, this is a a a a a, a sequel, I guess you would say, to Pastor Witherspoon's message because, as I mentioned earlier um, on, that I had the pleasure of speaking with him several times this week about his message because it just blessed me so much. And I remember during one of our conversations, the Spirit of the Lord began to minister to me and open up to me while we were talking about the individual fingerprints. God began to talk to me about the five fingerprints make, <coughs> excuse me, a complete handprint. The scripture that we just read, Pastor T.T. just said, is called the five-fold, y'all gonna help me preach this? Ministry. The five-fold ministry. And so as you all know, we have one, two, three, four, five fingers. Each finger has a fingerprint, right? But without each fingerprint, there is no hand print. Hand print. So it's good for us to understand our individuality. But in order to be more functional, we have to understand that without 
five fingers, we don't have a handprint. We only have an individual fingerprint. Right? Hallelujah. And so, um, it is our calling and our purpose to one have a fingerprint, but to be correctively functional operating as a body of Christ, we have to have a handprint. Pastor says it all the time. Everybody building what? An empire. But nobody's building what? The kingdom. Our individual fingerprint is an empire. But when, when we take all five fingerprints and we put them together, that is the kingdom. That's the kingdom. Hallelujah. Like I told you, I don't play church. Listen, if I ain't doing this for good and the glory of God, it ain't no need for me to do it at all. It is no need for me to stand up here as a passionate praiser in front of you every Sunday and bust hell wide open. Hallelujah. That is the honest truth. So I have a saying that I have coined many years ago. It is lie to the people, but tell yourself the truth. I'm going to say that again. Lie to the people, but sell your, tell yourself the truth. And what that simply means is I can lie to me all day. I can lie to you all day. You may not know the truth, but if I don't allow my truth to set me free, I am going to be damned for hell. And it makes no sense for me to stand here living a lie, preaching to you, and I'm going to bust hell wide open. Listen, I don't want to go to hell no more than you want to go to hell. And I don't want you to go to hell, so that's why I walk in my fingerprint. But today, I want us to step outside of our individual fingerprints. So listen, this church is on the back side of the mountain, right? But I can guarantee you it has the handprint of God. And that is because we have learned how to become functional. But what I want to do today is I want to open up your mindset so that we can clearly see, just in case we didn't realize, if we're operating in the fivefold ministry. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to try to be kind of quick because Pastor Witherspoon has said earlier during the week, maybe we can tag team preaching. Hallelujah. So maybe I can say a little bit. And maybe like he stirred me up last week, maybe I can stir him up this week. And I can pass the mic and we can tag team this thing a little bit. Anybody ready for that? Listen. Hallelujah. We talked about the individuality of last week's message, right? But as I said already, together in order for us to have a complete handprint, we have to be collective. And our collectiveness represents the corporate body of Christ. Let me help you understand. Just like the hand or the the fingers can't operate without it being a hand. And the body is not full functional with just the hand. It needs an arm and an elbow and a shoulder. Listen, God created this thing so that we can all work together and be functional. Right? But today's message is to under help you understand where you fit in. See, sometimes that's what we're missing. I said to you, get in where you fit in, but I don't mean just get in anywhere. I told you, get in where you fit in, but you still got to fit in the print. Hallelujah, somebody. When we think of the hand, we typically, like I said, think about five fingers. And sometimes a person may be born without all five fingers. Or maybe sometimes in life there's been an accident where they lose a digit. They may lose a finger. They may lose a few fingers. But the normal is five fingers. So I want you to understand in the body of Christ, it is intended for the normal to be five fingers. And the five-fold ministry, I'm going to get to it, y'all, represents the five fingers. Listen, I'm going to give them to you and then I'm going to go back. I said do the 
little differently. The five-fold ministry, as we read in Ephesians, is apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. That is the five-fold ministry. That is how God intends for us to operate in this place. And any time there are not five fingers, you can guarantee not only does the uh, handprint look different, but the strength of the hand is not the same. Listen, as I was studying last night, God just gave me a couple different things to try. And I'm going to encourage you to try it when you get home and you'll be able to understand the importance of having five fingers. Because sometimes we take things for granted. Listen, try taking your fork and put in between your pinky and your ring finger and eat with it. You can do it, but it ain't going to feel normal like when you put your fork in between your index finger and you, and I'm sorry, your um, yes, when you take your index finger, your thumb, and it rests upon your middle finger. That's normal, right? Anybody who uses a computer or a mouse, these are the three digits that you use. Try using these two fingers to operate the mouse. Huh? It's not the same. And so I need for us to understand in here, we cannot be effective and operate the same if we're only using two digits. But the problem is, some of us don't even realize that we are part of the five-fold ministry. I want to retrain your mind today because I need for us as a congregation and a body of Christ to be strengthened so that our handprint is evident and the enemy has no place in this place. Amen, somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Ephesians 4 real quick, and I promise I'm trying to get out of your way. In this verse, God names the five offices. I just gave them to you. Hell within the church. How do you somebody say it again with me? Five. five. Huh. One, two, three, four, five. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible says in Ephesians 4, so Christ himself gave the body. If you would allow me to just insert here, it says, no, it says, so Christ himself gave, um, and I'm inserting the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. He gave to us apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. But his purpose for giving us those things was to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ can be built up. We don't have the, the, the five-fold ministry just because. It ain't just to say my church is operating in the five-fold ministry to make us look good. No, God gave it to us for a reason. He gave it to us to operate so that we can build this church and this church can be a part of the building of the kingdom. Amen, somebody? Listen, remember I told you earlier during the week about being stirred up? Listen, um, many times uh, we have to understand that being stirred re-shifts the ingredients. Anybody ever been cooking before and all of your ingredients settled to the bottom of the pot? Listen, or all the seasonings rose to the top, but you want somebody to taste the dish, right? So you got to stir in that dish to redistribute what's going on in the pot before you let them taste it, right? You don't want to let them taste it with just the seasonings at the top or all the ingredients at the bottom. It's not going to be an effective assessment. Yeah. Listen, well, I just came by to tell Grant Hill today, I showed up to stir the pot. Hallelujah. We don't need all the seasonings hanging around at the top. And we certainly don't want all the ingredients laying at the bottom. We need to be stirred up in this place so we can be functional. Huh. We say all the time that Grant Hill is a healthy church. Listen, I'm going to agree with you. Listen, we say we have the young, 
we have the middle age and we have the older. We're going to call them the more seasoned saints because nobody want to uh, be called old. Listen, I'm over 59. I remember when I thought 50 was old. 50 ain't old. Listen, I'm jazzed and I'm snazzy. Listen, I ain't the regular kind of preacher. Hallelujah. And 50 ain't old. When you become 30, you realize that ain't old no more. Listen, 60, I look at Dr. Gladys Grant, stand up here. 70, right? 70 ain't old. Listen, 70 where? Listen, Gladys is about as snazzy and jazzy as you can be, right? Listen, that's the new 70. Hallelujah. Listen, the church is healthy. But what I need you to understand, when we start talking about age, we're talking about a physical healthy. And I feel with everything on the inside of me that Grant Hill is a financially healthy church. So we got physical and we got financial. But what I need you to understand is God ain't only looking at a physical and a financial healthy church. We have to be a spiritually healthy church. Listen, and if we ain't a spiritually healthy church, we missing the mark. Huh? Can we go back to the fingerprint again real quick for just a moment? As I was preparing for this message, um, I know that um, the fingerprints, um, I, I wanted to know when fingerprints were formed in babies. That was important for me to understand. Huh? And so I did my research and I understood and learned that fingerprints started forming as early as the 12th week when some cells in the middle layer of the skin, this is a little bit of history, y'all, y'all, I mean, um, uh, uh, science, just stick with me, called the basal layer starts growing faster than the cells in the inner layer of the dermis or outer layer of the epidermis. That's when fingerprints start to form. And this is in the 12th week of pregnancy. 12th week. And so the extra cells cause the skin to buckle and fold into ridges. As the fingers grow, new ridges and branches form. And somewhere between the 17th and the 19th week of gestation, a layer of keratin coats the surface of the skin. Smaller secondary ridges form out of uneven keratin growth and fingerprints begin to form. And so even before the child reaches the halfway mark of development, fingerprints are formed. And even before the child breaks through the birth canal, one of the most intricate things needed to identify them has already been formed as the rest of the body tries to catch up with what has already been established. See, fingerprints happen in the 12th week. The body catches up to the fingerprints. Listen, somebody's going to catch that in their spirit. But here's the problem with the church. Instead of the body of Christ catching up to what has already been established, which is our purpose, and understand that our purpose is our fingerprint, and our collective fingerprint is our church's handprint, we want to establish the church first, then establish the handprint of God. My Lord God. Say it with me, my Lord God. Listen, tell two or three people, sir, ma'am, that is not going to work. Listen, it's the wrong direction. How do you come on somebody? Listen, anybody in here um, that's ever had a baby understands and knows that one of the first things they do once the baby is born is they clean the baby up and they take the hand and footprints. Yeah. Am I right? And what this does is it ties that particular baby to a particular mother so that there is no question, because it's on record, who the baby belongs to. Come on, somebody. Listen, but imagine if the baby was born and the hospital had to wait several days or months until the baby's fingerprints developed before they could take the prints. Anybody knows how chaotic or dangerous that would be? Because if someone walked in 
and stole the baby, there would be no way to identify or claim the baby, even if it was later found. Y'all stay with me. I promise I'm wrapping up. While I've made some references to the fingerprint throughout the message, remember the overall purpose of this message is to help us not only see our fingerprint, but to see the handprint of God. And in order to see the handprint of God, we can only be physically and financially a healthy church. I said it already, we got to be a spiritually healthy church. And so Matthew 11 and 12 tells us, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violence has to take it by force. Listen, a jailer that was just dancing to it. Justice. Listen, we've got to have the handprint of God because many times we've got to take the justice in the kingdom that belongs to us because the enemy ain't going to give it to us. Listen, the enemy will put a truck hole around our neck and just like George Floyd, we can't breathe. We can't operate. So it's important that we have the handprint of God. In order to see the handprint of God, uh, like I said, we have to be spiritually healthy. Yes, our physical and financial forces will help, but the spirit of God, that's what really helps us win the battle. Listen, the Bible tells us in Acts 1 and 8 that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come. Listen, this is the Holy Ghost check right here. Because if you ain't got no power, I ain't said it, but the word said it. You might not have the Holy Ghost. <sighs> Glory to God. I didn't say it. This is what I want to give to you. And I love when God showed me this. When Jesus was crucified on the cross, listen, he could not hold on or grasp anything because the nails that were driven through his hand. Huh? How you gonna have a handprint when you got a nail in your hand? Huh? How you think God was gonna make a handprint when he had a nail in his hand or in his hands? And what I came by to help you understand is while he hung there exposed and naked, huh? and physically helpless, and it looked like things was out of control. See, the assumption would be incorrect because that's exactly what it was supposed to be. But what I need you to understand is, Christ's hands was nailed to the cross. That was his purpose, because he had to die. And he had to die so that there could be a transfer of the handprint. See, his handprint is no longer nailed to the cross because when he said, Father, I give up the ghost, his handprint transferred to him and it transferred, give me a hand, Pastor Wilson, transferred to you. It transferred to me. That is where the handprint of God is now. It is no longer on the cross. And it is no longer in the grave. Because I heard somewhere in 1 Corinthians, it says, Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh victory, oh grave, where is your victory? See, the enemy desired to take the handprint of God. And what I want you to understand is he still desires to take the handprint of God because he tries to nail your spiritual hands to the cross so that you can operate in the gifts and the callings that were put on your life. He wants to tie your hands. Listen, but this message is about mindset. Listen, the fivefold ministry, I'm gonna tell you right now, blame me, don't blame pastor, blame uh, God, because this is the interpretation that God gave to me. And that's what ministry is about. I'm not too big to say it. I may miss it. I may have overlooked the scripture. So if you found something where I'm wrong, please come back and tell me so that I can be informed as well. But this is the interpretation that God gave to me about the fivefold ministry. 
The fivefold ministry, as we talk about fingerprints, we have to understand that there are uh, roles in the church, the body of Christ, which is the fivefold ministry, and there are spiritual gifts. Every fivefold ministry role will be found within the spiritual gifts in the body of Christ. But there are more spiritual gifts than there are roles. So what you have to do is you have to take the spiritual gifts and you have to fit them into the fivefold ministry role. Amen, somebody? Listen, here's right here where it's going to get a little disruptive for y'all. Um, I'm going to need some participation. What God said to me is, and I'm going to give you an example of myself. Sometimes churches don't understand that they are operating in the fivefold ministry because of what we are taught. We are taught the title. But the Bible didn't say that God gave us five titles. He said it gives us five roles. So we have to teach the roles of the fivefold ministry so that we can operate effectively and throw the titles out the window. See, because if I tell Dr. Gladys Grant that she's an apostle, she's not going to want to be an apostle based on the fact of what we were taught. But today we're throwing the titles out the window. And we're operating in what the word of God says. God said that he gave us five roles. And I'm going to break the roles down to you. And I'm going to help you see how Grant Hill is not only a, a healthy church in age, how we're not only a financially healthy church, but Grant Hill is operating in the fivefold ministry. Grant Hill is spiritually healthy. Now what I'm going to say is everybody is not fully operating in their capacity and everybody is not operating in the fivefold ministry. But today, I'm hoping that you will find yourself in one of the roles. And today, I hope that you will get some just us for your life. Huh? So that the enemy can stop beating you down and so that you can get in the place that God has called you to be so that you can change the world, not tomorrow, but today. Listen, if we change our mindset, we change the way we do things. Amen, somebody? Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us today during our worship service. We are so grateful for your support of our ministry. If you would like to donate to Grant Hill Missionary Baptist Church, there are many ways you can give. Visit us online at www.granthillbaptist.org and click on the Donate button. You will find several options through which you can donate. You can give by using your credit card, PayPal, or Cash App. For Cash App users, please use the cash tag Grant Hill Baptist. You can also mail your donation to Grant Hill Missionary Baptist Church, 5405 Black River Road, Rembert, South Carolina, 29128. Please do not send cash through the mail. You can also bring your donation in person during our worship services on Sundays, beginning with Sunday school at 8.30 a.m. and worship service at 9 o'clock a.m. Again, thank you for your support. And may God continue to abundantly bless and keep you.